So what I'm going to talk about today is actually about the super system calculation. John just talked about how to decompose a big system into pieces to have a fast calculation, but we'll never, probably never be, uh, be avoid the necessity of calculating a big system. So uh, it's about a uh, calculating a big system and a system without doing any fragmentation at the level of DFT or Hachibach or sometimes TDDFT. And I, uh, the title is somewhat, an, a, a, a somewhat of a joke. Uh, when we talk about GPU, we tend to think about the cost of the system, but I'm, uh, I'm not gonna talk about the cost thing in the, um, uh, in the, the uh, as if it is the most important thing. I'll, talk, I'll mostly focus on the, the performance of the system. And this work is actually done mostly by my colleague here at Samsung, who is actually in the audience, I believe. And uh, I uh, sort of just played in the background, didn't really do much of it. So I feel a bit guilty about presenting his work as if it is my own work, but I'll do the presentation anyways. All right. So uh, it actually started with the uh, system that Samsung built last year. And when it was built, it was 11th on the, 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 the supercomputer, the ranking. Now it's at the 18th position last month, I believe. And if you understand somewhat about the uh, hardware construct, then you can easily see that it's a very expensive system. It is all connected by uh, HDR infinite band. And the um, having a 100% non-blocking thing with HDR costs a lot of money. And it includes uh, NVIDIA's 800 GPUs, eight on each system. And all the eight GPUs are connected through NVLink switch. That switch also is very expensive. So it's an expensive system. And I, I don't know how many, I, I don't even know how many nodes are available there, there, but there are many. And we didn't really full fill up the capability of the system because the, the, the linearity, the parallel efficiency ran out at, at some point, but we did as much as it could. So, uh, for performing EFT calculation or HATIPA calculation and a GPU, the common sense is, you know, how are we gonna chop down the jobs into multiple GPUs and multiple cores inside one GPU? And it's simple. Conceptually, it's very simple. We have to uh, work on the FAC build, right? Because that's the most expensive thing. And on the FAC build side, we have to chop down the Coulomb integral and exchange integral, and we have to chop down the grid calculation. The Coulomb and exchange integrals are in the blue box, and the, the grid decomposition is on the red box. And we just have to have a tactic of doing those things in an efficient manner. And adding TD, TDDFT on top of that DFT piece is not very different because in doing TDDFT calculation, some portion is similar to the Coulomb and exchange integral perform, uh, uh, the, uh, calculating Coulomb and exchange integrals, the blue box. We just need to uh, dress the integral with the, the, the excitation vector which turns the density matrix into, I mean, which turns the, uh, the coefficient into something density-like, that is density-like. So by replacing the density matrix of the, the normal SCF block build into a new density matrix, we can also perform the same calculation. And grid, uh, grid treatment is not very different from that story either. We just, convert the, 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 the grid-based 
component into something else and chop up the uh, grids into pieces and then, then do the same calculation. And before going any further in terms of uh, talking about the, 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 the Coulomb and exchange in turbulent grids, we probably have to consider the fact that the matrix treatments can be actually very expensive when the system becomes very large. So uh, uh, to check that, we did the, 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 the performance analysis on the A100 GPU. And this is simply showing the cost of performing matrix multiplication and matrix diagonalization on a very you know, fat matrix, the, the, the non-sparse. And uh, the 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 and and the 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 size, the maximum size, hundred thousand, is pretty much a matrix size that can fill up that will fill up the GPU memory of a a hundred eighty gigs. And the 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 matrix multiplication and diagonalization takes only about five minutes maximum. So. I will show you the, uh, the, the performance and analysis on the, the, the DFT and compared to other things, this is almost nothing. So uh, basically on our system, we don't have to worry about the matrix multiplication and matrix diagonalization. The, all the costs are coming from the ERI, the, the Coulomb exchange intervals and grid, uh, grid processing. So then if matrix processing is not a, problem, then the, the, the only thing that we have to uh, consider is how to uh, process the integrals. And the first piece is the Coulomb and exchange integral, which is based on the electron repulsion integral. And the tactic is actually widely discussed. And the tactic we took is not, was not very different from what is discussed before. But um, the, the, in, in a nutshell, what we did was uh, sorting the, the, the shell pair elements, the, if you call it shell pair, mu, shell, shell pair as mu nu, then we sorted mu in terms of the primitives and then nu in terms of its primitives. And then we did the third level of sorting by uh, looking at the size of the, the pair function. And the size is of course, the size can be easily computed from the, the its own integral. And by doing that sorting, as you can see from the, the diagram, in this axis and in this axis, if we walk to the shell pair in this manner, if this shell pair space is big enough, when we sit on a small piece, we have almost equivalent pairs, all the pairs inside one tiny block here will be the same. And that is very important for doing things on GPU because on GPU, the multiple threads has to do the same job. Otherwise it will be very, it'll become very slow. So uh, by sorting the shell pairs in this manner with the three criteria, we could perform things in this manner. So this figure is showing the, 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 the big thing in this manner. And as you can see, in this tiny block, all things are equivalent in terms of number of the, the primitive functions in the basis. So uh, by feeding in, one block to one GPU, the cores inside the GPU will do the same job and the parallel efficiency there will be pretty much very good. So this is the basic idea. And the, the, the each shell pair has to be, it has to be treated in, the, in that manner. And uh, my colleague Cody did, Cody did up to uh, L equals two level, of course, and beyond the, we, we, we can do the, do, do additional things for L, L 
being larger than two, of course, and we will have to do that to implement the gradient. And so the ERI could be processed in that manner. And the next step was, of course, treating the grid processing. And there, the easiest way to approach is to uh, dividing the space, entire space, until the space unit. And a tiny, a, a tiny cube will have a small enough number of the, the, the things to process. So uh, it starts with a big box, one box, top it up by having, in terms of X and Y and Z, there will be eight boxes. Mm -hmm. And then we can chop things up continuously until the grid points inside one box is less than, thre less than some threshold mm -hmm. value. So, uh, and then by uh, counting the, uh, the, 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 the associated basis functions, with the chopped up grid space, we can process in a relatively efficient, uh, efficient way with the GPU. So, so pretty much these two tactics were the things that we did. And 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 and, and you might think that the, the number of grids, if we do it that way of chopping things up, the number of grids might increase too much. But um, this is showing the requirement of the, the system resource for treating systems with these many atoms. And considering that in each GPU, 80 gigs of memory are available, you know, even 100,000 atoms, treating 100,000 atoms is possible. So uh, the, the, the calculation is never bound by the number of grid points with the you know presently available GPU. So the code was constructed that way and we decided to test how far it can it could it, it, it can go. And we chose chose the green fluorescent protein system with four with more than four thousand atoms and the basis function number of basis functions was about 40k. And we did the full system DFT calculation and full system PDDFT calculation. And of course, we couldn't compare the result against you know, any other program because we couldn't, we, we can't, we, we won't be able to calculate the, the whole system with other programs, but we checked that the, uh, the, the results are agreeing for small enough systems. So the code is working fine. And one interesting thing we uh, found for the whole system calculation was that if you look at the uh, the TDF calculation result, then this is gas based chromophore only calculation, and this is implicit solvent solvated chromophore, and this is QMMM calculation for the chromophore with classical protein, and this is full scale yet TDF calculation. And interestingly, the energy gap is different, even though we use the same exchange correlation functional. And you can see that the transition dipole is somewhat smaller with the full scale calculation. That means the, the excitation is borrowed to other excitations. That, I mean, it's not a proven thing, but I suspect that's what is happening. So uh, like John mentioned, the convergence of the QMMM might be much slower than many people may think. And that might be even more serious for TDDFT calculation. So I, I think we gotta be careful. And uh, what about the parallel efficiency? So this is showing the parallel efficiency in terms of the number of GPUs and number of uh, and, and, and the speed ups by the GPUs. And the data looks quite good. Although 
I'm using log log scale, which can lie somewhat to your eye because you might think that this is like the 80% pill efficiency, but it's 80% on the log scale. Actually, the pill efficiency is about like 40% at 256 GPUs. But that's actually quite enormous. You, you, the, the previous reported one was much worse than this with even smaller number of GPUs. So uh, this is actually very encouraging. This was very, actually very encouraging result. We could reach up to uh, hundreds of GPUs with uh, relatively, uh, relatively, relatively good efficiency. And the right figure shows us how much time is spent on each component of the calculations. And as you can see, the ERI calculation is dominating up to 256 GPUs. But you can also see that the matrix, matrix manipulation, matrix multiplication, DGMM, is actually kicking in when you, are, when you went on to about 256 GPUs. We didn't really parallelize the DGMM. Every, uh, every, uh, every matrix, matrix multiplication and diagonalization was done on one GPU. So uh, if we do some uh, parallelization of the matrix processing, it might, be, might become better, but it's something that we have to keep in mind. All right. I uh, sort of talked about expensive system, but does, does it say something about a cheap system? So uh, actually I myself built a, uh, my own uh, 800 system with two GPUs only. And instead of like million dollar costing NVLink switch, I used passive connector that the black thing, which costs about 200 bucks each. I don't know why the, the passive wire should cost 200 bucks, but NVIDIA sells it at that, at the price. And the a, 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 a hundred requires three of them. So I spent six bucks, 600 bucks on it. And I did the DFT and, and TDFT calculation on a small system like that. And this, that molecule is actually, actually an OLED molecule. It's an emissive molecule. And this is the result. And uh, I don't think Tovermole blocks this from uh, publishing uh, the, the benchmark data like uh, other G company. But um, the, uh, so the results are free and the two GPU calculation costs about one third of the, the one clock time. Pretty much just like that. And uh, we can easily see that the, uh, by comparing against the peak, the theoretical flops on this column, the parallel efficiency with the GPU is not as good as the CPU parallel efficiency. And that's because there are, you know, the, the shared pair blocking, there are boundaries where it becomes bad and then things like that. So uh, the, the, the GPU parallel efficiency will be only good with, when the system is really big. And what does it tell us? For price, for the C2 CPUs, I paid about 10 grand. And for the two GPUs, I paid about 30 grand. And the performance is about three times more, three more times. So price gain, it's unclear. What about what gain? In terms of power, the two CPUs are spending about 450 watts. And the two GPUs are spending about 500 watts. So it's three times better, right? So in terms of power, GPU is much better. For the price gain, it's not sold very widely. I, uh, I tried really hard to get on the street 800 GPU because 800 are only sold by the vendors like Hewlett Packard and IBM and, and stuff like that. So uh, there, I believe there is a big room to gain if we uh, buy more and more. So uh, on the uh, 
the, the, the abstract I uh, described as a future prospect. And this is really uh, that aspect of pricing is really related to the future prospect. So I explained I purchased three of this to connect to 800 GPUs. So I purchased it on the grid, on the, the eBay kind of thing in Korea. And after I purchased it, that was six months ago, it got sold out. I checked a minute ago, it is still sold out. So nobody's buying, no, nobody's buying it actually. And that's why things are still very expensive. So my future prospect is as we buy more and more of these, things will get cheaper and cheaper. So even the price gain will be there for us, I believe. So this is pretty much it. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay, two questions. Uh, it was actually a split, the 100% exact exchange plus LIP. Years ago, I wrote a paper for a the valence state dissolves until the charge transfer C, which is actually a reference to a famous line in a photochemistry textbook about the valence state dissolves until the transfer C. Uh -huh. We saw that as screws charge transfer C, you basically have this bright state and then right. setting the scene of the charge transfer space, and then whether or not with the real quantum mechanics still works, and we just get sprays and testing borrowing. Mm -hmm. Of course, your oscillator strength is sort of served by a sum rule. Mm -hmm. You just remain the, the oscillator strength, right? Um, right. And, and so, so you know, that, that drop, drop in intensity that you saw was consistent. Yes, I'm 100% agree. Of exchange, that's the scenario for the already playing a role. Yes, yes, yes. And then actually the reason we uh, used the 100% exact exchange was no matter what you tried without that, the charge transfer states went down and smeared into the, the bright state. So that's exactly that. Okay, Michael. All right. Uh, very nice presentation. Thank you for that. Um, you used in your implementation double precision cores. Exactly. Uh, can you use single precision? Uh, we can, we can, we, but we didn't really try to compare the, the performance or anything. Switching to single precision shouldn't be a big matter, but mm -hmm. we were afraid of using that for calculating the excited states. Uh, why is that? Oh, uh, you know, diagonalization, the iteration and everything. I, we weren't sure whether where we would go. We, we we didn't really try converting into that regime. Should be should be easy, and probably we we, we should get the answer and, and then compare. But our first try was with the double precision. Mm. Ah, so you want to have the benchmark yeah, 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 values yeah, exactly. Then exactly. This oh, yeah, is right. you know very recent approach uh, attempt right. and then right. the first thing that right. we uh, needed to do was with the double yeah. precision indeed so uh, as far as i know martinez uses uh, interchangeable single and double even in tddft calculations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he gains a lot the claim is yeah it should be because yeah. the uh, and, and another reason we tried to use the double precision first was we because we were using 800 a hundred is very good with the double precision calculation. Uh, if I compare the eight hundred against a five thousand, the double precision performance is like ten times better. Single mm -hmm. precision calculation is like almost twice. So uh, a hundred really gains in double precision calculation. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. The last question from Professor Che. Oh, thank you very much for a very nice talk. Uh, so you calculate GLPP for quantum. How long does it take? Uh, how many SCF iterations? Oh, SCF iterations, the number of iterations was, was not that bad. I believe it was, it was 
10, uh, just 12, 10, 12? Yeah, yeah, it's been definitely less than the, the 50. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, the entire time it took, I forgot, but um, with 256 GPUs, it is like some hours. Some hours. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.